Let's pimp this sentence. Jesus wept is a little bit short for my liking, a little bit colourless. So what could we do? Well, we could add to the verb an adverb, which is just going to uh, modify or colour that verb a bit. We could say, Jesus profusely wept. Or we could say, Jesus wept profusely. Both of them would work. So profusely, that L-Y ending is a signifier for what we call an adverb. And an adverb modifies a verb, but it can modify other things too. So what about if we add a word or words to colour the idea of Jesus, the main subject of our sentence, who is doing the weeping? Uh, we could say an exhausted... Jesus wept. An exhausted Jesus wept. So what this word exhausted is doing is it has formed the role of an adjective. So an adjective we generally describe as a describing word. So what state was Jesus in? He was in an exhausted state. So we've coloured this idea of this person with an adjective. An exhausted Jesus wept. There are many other ways we could express that Jesus is exhausted. The phrase dead tired comes to mind. Dead tired. So I'm just going to replace that for a moment. A dead tired... Jesus wept. It's great, but we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, we have killed Jesus. So what are we going to do? Jesus is not directly dead, as well as tired. Dead tired is a combined adjective. And so we indicate that by putting this dash, a hyphen. So dead tired here is called hyphenated because it is joined together by a hyphen. This makes our sentence a lot more logical, but also easier to read. Because the adjectives are grouped together, it means that if we want to just remove them from the equation, just to get back to who is the subject or what is the subject and what is happening, we can just remove them because they're one group, and all of a sudden Jesus wept. We're reminded that Jesus is the centre of our sentence, the weeping is the central verb of the sentence, and this is just colouring Jesus. What's interesting, if I was to put this dead, tired idea after the verb, so let's just rewrite this, Jesus wept, comma, dead tired. I don't hyphenate now. And I think the logic behind it is that the reader has found the central verb and so the meaning is clear and so we can cope with these as separate words. Whereas in the previous example we haven't reached our central verb, so the sentence doesn't make sense yet. And so we don't want to get bogged down in individual words, individual details, which are just colouring something. But because we've got Jesus wept, the essential sentence, then we can add whatever we like after, and we don't hyphenate. We very often add what we call clauses to make our sentences more interesting. They also complicate the sentence, so we need to make sure we don't overuse clauses too. But let's put a pretty standard clause in here. Um, seeing Lazarus... Oh, there's a possessive apostrophe that goes after the S. We'll look at that in another video. 
seeing Lazarus family crying, Jesus wept. Now, my central sentence is still Jesus wept. What this clause is doing is creating something that was happening at the time that Jesus started weeping. So we're creating some kind of concurrent picture, something that's happening simultaneously with Jesus weeping. And it also gives a sense of why was Jesus weeping, what sparked it off. Now, you'll see that my clause here is separated from the main sentence, Jesus wept, by a comma. Seeing Lazarus' family crying, Jesus wept.